24 years old Samate Abdullahi is a survivor. He was shot in the head during the post-election violence in Ivory Coast in 2010. His father was killed while out trying to gather money for his son's operation. The family has been struggling to make end meet ever since. Abdullahi has a lifelong after effects from his war injuries, which prevent him from doing hard physical work to help out his mother and two younger siblings. He is currently studying for an office job. Si, if I have this compensation fund, I will invest it and it will give me some peace of mind. I will be able to pursue my studies, knowing that my family has something to fall back on financially. Ivory Coast government has pledged to compensate the victims of the country's various crises between 1990 and 2012. Free health care for injured people, scholarship for war orphans and cash payment for the families of those killed during the war. But most of the victims still have not received anything and they are getting impatient. Earlier this month, some of them protested in front of the CONARIB, the government agency in charge of listing all victims entitled to compensation. They were pressing the agency to finally release the list of victims and for war children to have free education. Conarive has identified the victims and told us the total from various lists is 130,000 victims. They told us that now they need to verify it and give a definitive list to the president of Ivory Coast so he can validate it and the victims can't start receiving payment. But since it was created, the Conarive hasn't been able to produce this list. The CONARIV was created recently to finish the job of another agency whose list was deemed incomplete after three years of work. Commissioner Francois Kogis Ofumu says there are many challenges to pulling together a definitive list. There are victims in isolated areas who couldn't be identified. It's for them that we're extending the delay to register. Kogis also says the verification process takes time, with teams cross-referencing data on computers, via phone calls, or, when necessary, in the field. There is some progress on the payment front. Last August, 4,500 victims of the 2010-2011 post-election violence received payments. Aya Kwadio was one of them. Both her husband and his brother were killed, leaving two wives and 17 children behind. When Kwadio received the money, she divided it among all the children. Now she would like the government to help her children get an education so they can find jobs. Before school starts, they should say, here are the children of the crisis, here are their cases. Here is what we'll do to help them. We shouldn't have to do sit-ins or cry to people. We are tired of begging. Kwadio adds that she's hopeful that getting some kind of compensation is a good first sign that the reparation process is going in the right direction. Emily Yob for VUN News in Abidjan.